James, over to you. Thanks. I'm James Dean. I'm the Director of Policy at BBC Media Action. Um, I also, once upon a time, used to direct the um, Panos Institute as well, so we're a close group here. <laughs> um, I think I wanted to pick up something, well, several things Brian said, as well as Andrew, and that wonderful phrase he said that everything is connected to everything else. The thing that's really different about this whole debate now is that everyone, el everyone is connected to everyone else. Um, uh, that's not quite true yet, but it's increasingly true. And the thing that I think has puzzled me for quite a while about the development debate in the, in, in the UK is that it's still so focused on a set of, um, quite a specific set of development actors and so disconnected from a lot of the debates going on in developing countries. Uh, part of my job is also to oversee a lot of our research work um, and a lot of the work that BBC Media Action is doing is to engage um, and provide information to and encourage debate uh, among the people we're trying to reach, about 250, 300 million people worldwide, <coughs> and we do a lot of research around that. And the kind of debate, the kind of issues that are confronting the people we're talking to all the time, and the language that they're using uh, is a different language, and uh, Mary's already picked up on it. And I think it is interesting that the whole Busan process, I was privileged enough to go to, to, to Busan, um, and it was a really important conference. And the whole aid effectiveness debate, development effectiveness debate, is built on some key principles. And the central principle is ownership. And a lot of that debate is actually not driven by the OECD DAC, it is driven by the finance ministers and development ministers and other ministers from developing countries. And I'm not convinced we can say th the same thing about the global public conversation on development, because I don't think there is a global public conversation on development. There's a British public conversation, there's quite a British development conversation, the same in the US and so on, but very little of it is actually informed directly by people who've got most to win or lose from these debates. Um, and while we're trying to get lots of coverage, and there is the ongoing 10, 20, 30 year old discussion about how do we get better coverage of developing countries in the mainstream media, the opportunity it seems to me is to have that unmediated conversation. Um, it's very strange that so little of a development debate, so little of these issues are really being pushed by people who are most affected by them within countries. Yeah, they are certainly pushed by very good um, uh, um, charities like Christian Aid, and they are, of course, reflecting the people they're working with within countries. But that's still a mediated debate. And what the Sunday Times or the BBC does is still a mediated debate. I think we may be moving to a different phase, which is where you actually can have, start getting real anger, real uh, demand, real perspective, real solutions coming from the countries where this is most have it where these issues are, are, are most important. That's not quite happened yet. We have had big, huge explosions of, of social media and stories around, particularly Coney, uh, the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole Coney um, uh, video thing. But that was very much, again, a northern manifestation of a development issue. When are we going to get the southern manifestation of development issues <coughs> where they are actually directly driving deba debate? I think there's an opportunity for that now. Finally, I think there are things, just because um, uh, we were going to have someone from the BBC here, I actually do think there's other things which are changing. Um, I, I think we do have to remember that there is um, the, the BBC itself has now got an integrated newsroom. I think we're probably going to see a lot more development stories, not least because language services, for example, of a new broadcasting house are directly connected to the, to the main, to, 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 to the, to, to the, um, to the UK newsroom, and so I think we're probably going to get a lot more of those kind of perspectives in. Finally, 70% is it, people in Africa are now under the age of 24. Large numbers of those are connected. They are going to, the, 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 the development debate they are having is about aspiration, it's about ambition, it's about enterprise, it's about a completely different discourse to a lot of the one that's happened before in Africa and elsewhere. And that really needs to be reflected, and I think that they will increasingly be, be, be driving a, a global conversation on this issue. Uh, thank you very much indeed, James. And just before handing over to Jonathan, just to comment, if I may, on, on one of the things you said about the need to engage people directly in this discussion from the South. 
um, as part of this process of the high-level panel, which is putting together the framework for um, what should come after the MDGs in 2015, and which will report by the middle of next year, the UN is actually running something called My World, and that is precisely a social media uh, interrogative um, uh, process which is designed um, to get uh, views and opinions from civil society. Um, uh, I think they've started off with 50 developing countries, whatever a developing country is, which is something you might come on to. Uh, they've now gone up to 67 countries, I think, where people are very enthusiastic. They expect to get millions and millions and millions of kind of tweets and blogs and things, you know, saying what it is that people actually want out of this process. So it's mediated to a degree, but that's at least a step, I think, in a very positive step in the right direction. Thanks very much.